Peter, hey, you look tense. I feel tense. I'm Adam Ennis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. I'm still having back spasms from when we sat up straight the other day. I know, that was hard. Yeah, and yeah. there's a lot of tension in my body when we do this podcast. I have not found my podcast posture. Well, you know what, just the, today's uh, subject matter has me a little bit tense, which is could work against it because I think what we're trying to preach here, the title of it that you have is Tension in the Body. We don't mean we're going to give you tension in your body. We, I mean, we might a little relief, bit. <laughs> right? <laughs> How do we, but I mean, as it pertains to, I think, playing our instruments and, yeah. and we, we, we've been talking about meditation. We've been practicing what we preach up in here, working on posture. I got the mic up high. I've got it adjusted for a six foot three individual and I'm coming in at about five, six and a half. So that's pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? This subject, um, we're, Tension in the body, holding tension as you play. I yeah. think it is an underrated subject. If you talk to a, say, classical musician, yes. they oh, think about this all the time. Right. I mean, they do like, you know, Anderson technique stuff or whatever that is. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? I've never done anything. Alexander technique. Anderson technique. <laughs> yeah. is yeah, a, Anderson is a Cooper different, technique. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, the Alexander technique, you know, um, sitting with great posture and, and keeping things. Alexander you know, Hamilton. All right, we're way His off the rails. Alexander we're already Hamilton. off the rails. Isn't it named after him? I don't <laughs> think so. Oh, okay. I don't think so. This is from a uh, email that we got from it was named after Lamar Alexander, the senator from <laughs> no. Tennessee. Okay, no, <laughs> we need lunch, man. We need lunch. <laughs> this is a listener question from Darren. I was wondering if there were any podcast or two-minute shorts on what to do about tension in your neck, shoulders while playing. Um, with my luck, as soon as I send this one, will pop up. No, because we haven't done one yet. No, because uh, we're not doctors. <laughs> so I've always, I've always struggled with carrying a lot of tension in my back and shoulders when I play. It badly affects my ability to swing and play natural sounding music. Yeah. If you've ever dealt with it or helped students learn how to relax and have good ergonomics, it would really help me to hear it. Cheers, Darren. Okay, I will say again, we're not doctors. I want to really, because we rarely get into areas where we could get into trouble with our advice, but I feel like we're going to today. Yeah. So I will say again, we are not doctors. No. Uh, we're not even doctors of jazz. No. But we both play Dr. Jazz. Great tune, Jelly Roll Morton. <laughs> Shout out to New Orleans. I don't even know if we're bachelors yet. Of <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Um, but, so we, we want to tread lightly and really encourage you, and this is not just you know from the you'll hear it attorney team, to consult a doctor before partaking in any kind of uh, treatment. Uh, but, but seriously, you should. A doctor, chiropractor, yoga. I mean, there's a lot of different things physically that you can do in general, to, I think, to help. So maybe what we can try to do is today is to keep it close to the vest and talk about things maybe we've experienced or things specific to music, to practice, to performance that, that have worked for us in terms of relaxation and removing tension you know yeah, or not even getting to the point where you not even that. not even getting to the point is yep. is the the big part and you know what tension starts not in the body but in the mind and, that's right and you're allowing your body to reflect something that's going on in your mind as you play right and that just should not happen in dirty mind dirty body that's what they say <laughs> <laughs> um but the good news is, is you can practice not being tense, yep. you know, and I think it starts in the practice room. It yeah. starts when, whenever you touch your instrument, every time you touch your instrument to practice, that you are aware of being relaxed, that you're aware of any tension yeah. and that you're not beating yourself up about the tension, but that you just kind of let it go and, and, and allow your shoulders to relax, allow this entire carriage here, which is your shoulder and your arms to yeah. just feel loose and relaxed at yeah. all times when you practice. That's where you start. Yep, and I think that just being mindful about the relationship that we physically have with our instrument and with our body, mm -hmm. and, and it's absolutely with our mind, so that's why I'm saying being mindful of that, yeah. but the manifestation of that is a physical relationship we have. So it's not even, like, like there's specific things for each instrument, and we're maybe somewhat experts on piano, but only that, so you have to also consult really good players on your instrument as to what... I mean, like I hear trumpet players talking about, I remember Terrence Blanchard has a whole thing about like how the, the breath comes through and the, mm -hmm. you know, the horn, all those things, those can be super helpful. So there's instrument specific things, but then there's just your relationship with the instrument and being at a place where you can even possibly start from a relaxed standpoint. You have to start from a relaxed mindset first. Yeah. And then this tension that's in your shoulders, like I said, it starts in your head, in your mind, yep. and, but it doesn't go right to your shoulders. It actually comes through your breath. Because yeah. if your shoulders are tense, I guarantee you that you're not taking full deep breaths. You're holding your, you know, like that. You're holding your breath in, 
and you you can start by deep breaths at your instrument or even just that when that's for every that we for do every, know is for every I instrument mean, just breathe like yeah. like practice being relaxed and playing and breathing in a relaxed way you know, i mean so many times we way. yeah i mean ruben rogers the great ruben who has um, done some of our uh, great lessons on this for our courses that's right he talked about this yeah it's so applicable to every instrument like he's such a master and i've seen him do this like uh, he has such a good uh, intuitive feel for this. He's automated it into his playing that when he gets to more tense parts of the music, because look, there's going to be tension in music. I mean, tension and release musically is so important. How do we not manifest that? Like he'll do a thing where like things are getting really intense and he just like automatically goes into these kind of breaths, even as he's playing in a way, maybe yeah. with no breath. Yeah. He's such, he has such a great relationship between his physical approach to his instrument and then his kind of intuitive understanding of the music and where it's going. But that all happens when we practice because when you get into the moment, no matter what you're doing practice-wise, if you're not practicing the right techniques for this and things that are going to keep you relaxed, you have no chance of doing it once you get on the gig because there's going to be many things that bring tension to your mind and to the moment. Who's in the audience? Do I know the music? I'm nervous and all these kind of things. So I think that we can think about practicing, you know, the breathing and relaxing and like all the things that we've talked about before in terms of like strength in your arms and wrists, strength without tension, yep. which is a very advanced technique, but can be practiced every day. Like the other day we had the episode, what can I practice today? Mm -hmm. You can always start with doing that. Just like if you're training for a marathon, it's like you can't go out the first day and run a marathon, but you can go out and run 100 meters or yeah. 400 meters yeah. or five, whatever you can do, that's where you're starting. And so this is, there's no preparation for being relaxed and strong with how you play. There's just advancement levels for you in the future. That's so great. Um, another thing I would say to this that as I'm reading your question here is to stop trying to swing with tension. Like stop yeah. trying to use tension as a tool to swing. I see this all the time. Don't yeah. you see this where yeah. people are like... Especially drummers. Yeah, see, we both went right I to mean, drums. Just go, just, or, or even, but pianists yeah. do this too a lot. I'm, it's starting yeah. to swing and I really want to get it swinging so I'm just going to... It just tenses up so easily. Yeah. That does not, as you allude to here in your question, Darren, that does not help with swing. In fact, it's counterintuitive, or it's, it, it counteracts the swing. Yeah. And you know who I would listen to for this? There's actually two modern pianists who I think swing super hard and are incredible incredibly relaxed in their technique wait one of them one of them let's see if we say it at the, let's say it at the same time see if we're thinking of the same person ready right, ready one two three kenny bill charlem <laughs> oh that was my number two so that's good well, you know, kenny kirkland yeah. is also one i mean listen every great pianist just relaxes as they swing yeah. but i was thinking of sullivan fortner and bill charlem mm. they both have what i would call like a a big movement technique right yeah. where they're they're rolling big, with their hands right right you big know circles. what i mean big circles and they sound super relaxed, and they swing so hard. Bill, yep. Bill Charlotte and Sullivan Fortner, and then you know Kenny Kirkland and Chick Corea, I think, yep. are two people in the same vein of swing. Exactly, and they sound like they're they have a lot of tension because yeah. they have so much intensity in their sound. But if you watch them play, they're so loose. Oh man, Kenny was and and Chick Corea has such great, like you can just see his relationship with the instrument he has such a great physical natural relationship with the instrument obviously so much control he can swing so hard and then he does a lot of things that are very musically tense that's that's a big thing like we have to decouple yeah. the tension in the music that's yeah. inevitably there from you cannot bring that tension on yourself like you have yeah. to stay relaxed and strong that's and be good. able to bring out the musical tension that's different than physical tension it is and i think that's how tension happens in swing because swing creates this tension i mean if you're swinging you're starting to create tension and resolve it yeah and so i think people think they need to use that tension stop using that tension you can only swing if you're relaxed so practice trying to swing really swing yeah. in a completely relaxed straight. And I think that there's things that you can do. Um, I've, I've always taken a lot of inspiration from athletics mm. for f the physical, um, you know, physical approaches to playing the piano, partly because, I, I mean, I think this can be done for a lot of instruments, just piano and violin, I know a little, but, but piano is the main one I know. And the reason I say athletics is like, this could be any sport from like ping pong to basketball to, to running to weightlifting to yoga, mm -hmm. you know, anything to walking. I mean, we are, everybody, some people say I'm not an athlete. And I'm always like, everybody's an athlete. Did you, if you can walk, if you can, you know, do this, you, you're doing something on some level athletic. It's just from the idea of not competitive athlete, from the idea of like control of your body. Mm -hmm. And so if you look to, yeah, certainly Kenny Kirkland and Chick Corea and Bill Charlap, you know, for, for specific techniques of how they do the piano but if you also look to people that know how to control their bodies in a very advanced way 
Um, I'm, I'm thinking like Usain Bolt, you know, the sprinter, because it's such a specific thing. Talk about power with r total relaxation. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, and everybody thinks like, oh, like if you slow down, like I've, I've looked at these analyses of his running form when he slowed down, a lot of these same things like you were saying with Sullivan Fortner, like with the, you know, big round thing, that's the same thing. Like they, it's never like, eh, 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 eh. see that YouTube? You can see my... My, my, my tense He's runner. making a very <laughs> jerky, weird running motion. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, everything is like a circle. Everything is like economy of motion. Definitely not tense. Like, eh, you know, No, and, stuck and his shoulders, it looks like he's reading a book or something. I yeah. mean, it just looks like he's sitting in a chair relaxed and he's, you know, the fastest man in the world. Yeah. And so we can take kind of large scale, um, you know, I think uh, it, it almost like advice physically about the way an athlete would control their body and then apply it in ways that, that are not obviously exactly the same, but conceptually are very similar. And then I think what's important is to, you got to do something a way to bounce. Like this is what I've learned from yoga a lot from, from my very unadvanced yoga practice, but I've, I've you know, my wife is a yoga instructor and I've followed her and watched her cause I like her, but I mean, it's like, <laughs> no, you know, like seeing, like learning about yoga in that there's always a balance to everything. Yeah. Like you never are doing something just on your right side or whatever. Right. And so for the piano, we have to think about this because you can get out of balance because of what the hands do. Of course. You know, how we are with the instrument. The, the instrument's physically awkward. So doing something, and I mean, I love and recommend yoga to a lot of pianists in terms of getting in touch with your body, the athleticism of it, being able to control it in a way, and being able to just do stuff, you know, balancing push and pull like there's so much stuff and then there's the actual balancing things that i don't know and it's not about like look was oscar peterson a yogi and and doing yoga he was pretty good without doing that but it's, so it's not like you have to do that but that's one way when you can start to get in touch with your body and and, and being able to control things on your instrument in a way that's effective it's just awareness isn't it awareness. it's just self-awareness yeah. and that includes your body and the tension that's there yeah. so darren if you're serious about this start practicing swinging relaxed you yeah. know, and make that a regular part of your practice until yeah. it starts coming through on on your gigs when you're playing with other people. You yeah, know? yeah, and and I think don't they, ignore it. Yeah, absolutely. That's like the way you actually can practice it on the gig. And I think if you think about the lack of tension stuff, you want to go very, very basic so that you can be aware that you're in total control. So that might just be a C major scale where you're like, I know this. Of course, I know the fingers, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be totally relaxed. I'm going to have you can know, be this, aware, be very aware, because when you're doing something difficult, it's just natural. Your body's going to tense up. You will start to be able to control it, but that's always going to be a part of it. I've seen the greatest performers still have some tension. So it's more about like, how do you control it? How do you kind of ramp it back when it gets there if you feel tension coming on you know take a step back in your mind focus on your breath that yeah. always helps absolutely focus and just stop sometimes like stop don't yeah, just yeah, yeah. yeah stop you know kind of loosen it up another thing is like and i've actually never gotten that much into this but greg hutchinson great drummer like he gets a lot of massages in specific areas because the, yeah, the yeah. drums have i yeah. mean as physical as the piano is the drums is a very physical thing and so like i think his technique is very natural and stuff but he's so aware of his body he's like i need you know, massage here, whatever, to, to get ready so that I'm really, and he's in amazing physical shape and amazing musical shape. So I think that there's certainly some benefits of that. It's, it's not an area I know a lot about, but. It's great. Good. Cool. Nailed it. Nailed it. Okay, so we have, um, we have this new program that we haven't been attending to, but has been a wonderful part of what we're doing, which is the listener tune as the outro. Did you know about this? I don't know if you listen to the You'll Hear a Podcast. I try not to. Okay. <laughs> well, I do occasionally. I don't always make it to the end. But the idea here is that you would send in mm -hmm. uh, something because we want to give give the listeners some love with their music. And we want to hear it and we want everybody to hear it. So this is a chance for you to send something in. We just ask that it maybe be good for outro music. Like yeah. you've heard what we have here. Yeah, yeah. You know. And so today we have something. You we have, it? yeah, a, a tune by uh, Clyde Stats. Well, he didn't write it, but it's his version of Billy's Bounce. And we love the name, too. But we also Clyde like the track. Clyde Stats, that's a great jazz Actually, no, we haven't name. heard it. Have you heard this? I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard it yet, but we're about to hear it. Okay. Um, you know, so Clyde Stats is a great jazz musician name. I don't have a great jazz musician name. It's Adam Manis. First of all, there's the double M that we've talked about. Yeah. But, you know, my dad is Lester Earl Manis Jr. And so there was never a possibility because he didn't want to name his kid, but I could have been. There's Lester Earl Manis the third. Yeah, that would have been an awesome. Jazz Could you imagine Lester Earl Manis the third big bands featuring Mildred Snitzer? I could totally see that. Okay, but as a professional <laughs> jazz pianist, if my name were Lester Manis, come on. I don't know. That could go either way. But I don't know, man. Good. I think it would have been pretty good. Changed my career. Good stuff. <laughs> well, till tomorrow. You'll hear it.